Let us understand some important formula related to inventory model 2A. Inventory model 2 is under the category of elementary model with deterministic that is constant demand and shortages are allowed. For model 2A, demand rate is uniform and replenishment rate is infinite. Now we will understand all these characteristics with the help of graph. For that on vertical line we have to show inventory level and on horizontal line we have to show time. Now first parameter that we have to consider IM that is the number of items that form inventory at the beginning of interval T. So here beginning of interval T that means this is the initial line and on this vertical line we have to show some level of the inventory. And that is nothing but IM. So suppose we will consider initially the number of items that form inventory is up to this point. So for this point I will show here as a IM. With the help of vertical line. That is in inventory IM is available up to this point initially. Then what is happening? Then next is demand rate. So suppose there is up to this, this is the inventory level and then demand rate is uniform. So it is given that demand rate is uniform. That means we can also say that consumption rate is uniform and its notation is R. So we have to show that demand rate. So it is uniform. So we have to show with some slope. So I will show here. This is the slope and here is the demand rate. Then again we have to move to the next point. So if we observe demand rate continues at this point it becomes zero. So we will consider here up to point A inventory IM is there and at this point B inventory becomes zero. And from this point shortages starts or shortages occur. So what is happening? So when shortages occur, that is when at point B shortages occur, customers leave their orders with the supplier. And shortages starts piling up at constant rate R. So we have to show the shortages at the same rate of R. That is we have to continue this slope R. So I will continue because we have to extend this inclined line up to a particular point and until it reaches level S. So we have to end this point until some level S. Now we will show here the level S with the help of vertical line. So here is level S. Now I will indicate this point as a point C. So when the shortages reaches to the point C or reaches to up to the shortage level S, then what is happening? Then we have to place an order. So when order is placed, that is fill in stock process is instantaneous because replenishment rate is infinite. Replenishment means fill in stock. And it is infinite that means the process of filling the stock is instantaneous. So within no time we have to fill up this level. So we have to draw here the vertical line. Now this inventory filling the stock is remain constant. So from this initial line if I extend this. Then we have to fill up this stock up to this line. So from this point C, we will draw one vertical line. So up to this point, that is up to point D, shortages are filled up. And then again remaining inventory level, that is equal to IM is there for the next cycle. And this level IM is available for the next cycle. So I will show with the help of black marker. So here is the level. Now we will show the time interval. So here from this point O to B there is time interval T1.
and at this point B, within time interval, inventory becomes zero. And then after point B, shortages occur. So from this point B to D, there is time interval T2. So I will show here with the help of red marker. And this total time interval, that is T1 and T2, will become, that is T1 plus T2, that is equal to T. So we will show here T1 plus T2, that is Now if we observe the inventory level that is the order is given at point C and inventory is filled up from this point C up to this point E. So what is this inventory that is order is given from this point C to E that is equal to the total order and that is equal to Q. So I will show this with the help of the vertical line. So this diagram is getting completed. Now if we observe this cycle starts from this point O and it ends at this point D. And during this cycle here is the time interval T, here is the inventory level Q. And this T is divided into two parts that is T1 and T2. Now we will move to the other parameters. Now C1, cost of holding per item per unit time. Then C2, shortage cost per item per unit time. C3, ordering cost per order. Then Q, number of orders ordered. So this Q is equal to, so now if we complete this triangle. So if we observe here from this point A, if I draw here the line, that is the construction line. Then here is the triangle. And in this triangle, this Q is equal to this R multiplied by this t. So we can say that q is equal to rt. Then t interval between orders. So interval between orders because this is the time for the first cycle or one cycle. We will understand the important formula related to model 2a with the help of diagram. How we can write t? So this total time interval t is equal to t1 plus t2. Now we will write T1 and T2 in the form of T. So how to write? So to write T1 we have to refer the two triangles. That is triangle OAB and triangle PAC. Now within these two triangles we will take the ratio of base. That is T1 by T is equal to ratio of height. That is IM by Q. Then we will move next. So how we can write this T2 in, in the form of T. So again we will take the two triangles that is triangle CDB and triangle CEA. Now we will take the ratio of base that is BD by A. So this AE is equal to this PC and that is equal to T. So we can write T2 by T is equal to ratio of height that is S divided by Q because this CE is equal to Q. So we can write T2 by T is equal to S by Q and how we can write this S? So this S is nothing but the difference in between this Q and I M. That is Q minus I M by Q. Now we will find out what is the total inventory in time T. So here is the total duration time T. And in between this time T inventory available only up to point B. So we have to consider here the area of triangle O A B. So what is this area of triangle OAB that is half multiplied by OB multiplied by OR that is half multiplied by IM into T1. Then inventory holding cost during time T. So inventory holding cost that is nothing but the holding cost multiplied by the inventory available. So inventory available is Limited to area of triangle OAB. So this area of triangle multiplied by C1. That is half I M T1 into C1. So we will uh, consider this is the first cost. That is the holding cost. So I will write 1. Then total shortage cost during time T. So here shortage. That, sorry uh, only shortage. Total shortage during time T. So how to uh, find out shortage. That is the area of triangle. B, C, D. Because up to this triangle, I have shown with the help of red marker, there is the shortage. 
so half multiplied by q minus i because we have to take height so s is equal to q minus i m multiplied by base that is t so here instead of s we have to write formula in the form of i m so how to write the shortage cost so we have to just multiply shortage cost c2 that is half c2 q minus i m t2 so i will write here as a equation 2 now next ordering cost during time t so ordering cost during time t that is c3 and i will write here as a equation 3 now we will find out what is the total cost during time t so we have to add holding cost shortage cost and ordering cost so i will add half c1 imt t1 plus half c2 q minus imt2 plus c3 now we will write total cost per unit time so here instead of during time i will write here per unit time so how to write this per unit time so we have to simply divide this with t so i will take here this two first two uh, terms i will multiply here with 1 by t and for this c3 i will divide here with t so this is this is the total cost during per unit time now we will replace this t1 t2 in the form of t uh, or in the form of uh, if we observe here is the equation in the form of i m and q so if we observe how we can write this q so q is equal to r into t so this t we will write so i will write here q is equal to r into t and therefore t we will write we can write q by r and if i write this t1 and t2 in the form of t from these two equations then this t and t is getting cancelled because here in denominator there is t so we will write now so now total cost uh, total cost per unit time we will write in the another form we will replace the value of t1 and t2 so i will write here total cost total cost per unit time per unit time so how i can write this so i will write here half multiplied by c1 into im that will remain same but t1 that is equal to im q im by q into t but outside the bracket 1 by t is there that means this t t is getting cancelled so here only im by q so this im im that is im square divided by q plus half c2 now how i can write this t2 so here t2 is q minus i m by q into t so here already q minus i m is there so i will write q minus i m bracket square and divided by q we have to write here q and this t t because if i take this t to the right hand side then t and t is getting cancelled then plus c3 divided by now t is q by r so if i write here q then this r will transfer to the numerator so this is the another formula in terms of i m and q that we can also refer optimum value of i m that is i m o is equal to c2 divided by c1 plus c2 q o now what is this q o that is optimal value of q That is Q O is equal to under root of C one plus C two by C two under root of two C three R by C one. The next formula minimum average cost per unit time. That is C O. So we will write this minimum average cost in terms of I M M Q. That is equal to under root of C two divided by C one plus C two under root of two C one C three R. The next optimal time interval t that is T O. So T O is equal to this Q O divided by R. Given question: A particular item has a demand of nine thousand units per year. The cost of one procurement is rupees hundred, and the holding cost per unit is rupees two point forty per year. The replacement is instantaneous, and shortage cost is rupees five per unit per year. Determine economic lot size, number of orders per year, time between orders. Total cost per year if cost of one unit is rupees one. 
let us understand the given data demand rate is given 9000 units per year demand rate that is r ordering cost c3 rupees 100 per procurement holding cost c1 rupees 2.40 per unit per year shortage cost c2 rupees 5 per unit per year if we observe units the time is given for period of one year now we have to find out the economic order quantity or we can say optimal quantity that is QO. So what is the formula for the model 2A because shortages are allowed. So we will use the formula C1 under root of C1 plus C2 by C2 under root of 2 C3 R by C1. Now if we observe here C1, C2, C3 values are given in the question so we will use those values as it is and r is also given so when we put all values then we will get the answer 1053 units per procurement that is 1053 units per order this is the lot size now next question is that number of orders per year so how to calculate the number of orders so here is the demand in one year so there is 9000 units required in one year and one lot is having 1053 units. So how many number of orders that is NO is equal to this 9000 divided by 1053. So which is equal to 8.55. Then third is time interval between the orders. So here we will find out the optimal time interval that is t to the base o which is equal to 1 by n o that is 1 divided by number of orders that is 1 divided by 8.55 which is equal to 0 0.117 now if we observe the units from the given data then unit for the time is in year so for this time period also having the same unit that is year now we will calculate the total cost per year if cost of one unit is rupees 1. So here in one year there are total 9000 units required. So we have to calculate the optimal cost that is CO. So what is the formula for CO? Under root of C2 divided by C1 plus C2 under root of 2 C1 C3 R. But this is the formula for calculation of one unit cost. But there are total 9000 units and here for one unit the cost is rupees 1. So we will add this cost that is 9000 into 1 plus this formula. Now we will put all these values and we will calculate 9000 plus 1710 that is rupees 10710 per year. Given question, a dealer supplies you the following information with regard to a product dealt in by him. Annual demand 10,000 units, ordering cost rupees 10 per order, inventory carrying cost 20% of value of inventory per year, price rupees 20 per unit. The dealer is considering the possibility of allowing the sum back order stock out to occur he has estimated that the annual cost of back ordering will be 25 percent of the value of inventory first question what should be the optimum number of units of the product he should buy in one lot second what quantity of the product should be allowed to be back ordered if any third what would be the maximum quantity of inventory at any time of the year Fourth, would you recommend to allow back ordering? If so, what would be the annual cost saving by adopting the policy of back ordering? This question was asked PU MFC 2002. Let us understand the given rate. Demand rate are 10,000 units per year. Ordering cost C3 rupees 10 per order. Inventory carrying cost that is holding cost C1 20% of value of inventory per year. Now price is given. So price is given 20 rupees. So we will multiply this with 20% that is 20 by 100 into 20 which is equal to rupees 4 per unit per year. Then back ordering cost.
cost. So back order means shortage cost that is C2 is equal to 25% of value of inventory per year that is 25 by 100 into 20 that is rupees 5 per unit per year. Now first question is that we have to calculate economic order quantity or optimal lot size that is QO. So we have formula under root of C1 plus C2 by C2 under root of 2 C3 R by C1. So here C1, C2, C3 values are given. Now if we observe the units, units that is time interval is for one year for each and every parameter. So we can use here as per the given data what is C1. So here C1 is rupees 4 plus C2. So C2 is rupees 5 plus divided by C2 that is 5 into other bracket 2 C3. So what is the C3 that is ordering cost for one order that is 2 into 10 multiplied by R. So R is 10,000 divided by C1 that is 4. So when we solve this we will get the answer 300 units per order. Now second question quantity allowed to be back ordered. Now if we observe this graph we have to find out this value of shortage S. So how to find out this value? Now from this graph this S is equal to this Q minus I. So we have optimal lot size QO. So we will find out what is the optimal maximum inventory that is IMO by using formula. So how to find out this IMO? So IMO is equal to under root of C2 divided by C1 plus C2 under root of 2 C3 R by C1. Now we, if we put the values then we will get the answer 167 units. So this value is 167 units and value of QO is 300 units. So what is the value of S? That is 300 minus 167, 133 units. And the next question is maximum inventory. So maximum inventory is this, that is IM. So here we will take the optimal maximum inventory, that is 167 units. Then fourth question, annual cost without back order. So whenever shortages are not considered, then which formula we have to use? We have to use under root of 2RC3C1 to calculate the cost. So when we put the values then we will get rupees 894. So this is the cost for the annual order. Now if we consider the shortages then what is the annual cost with back order. So which is equal to under root of C2 divided by C1 plus C2 under root of 2 R C3 C1. So all the values are known and when we put it is rupees 667. Now if we compare these two costs. Then cost with back order is less and there is saving. So what is the amount of saving? That is 894 minus 667. That is saving is rupees 227. That is 227. And we have to follow with back order.